All right, so the SEC has laid down their sword and surrendered over to Ripple. There's a lot to break down into this today. I think you guys are going to like it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to the Tech Path. All right, a couple of things I want to go with. Before we start, though, I want to thank our sponsors, Tangem. If you guys are looking at going to self-custody, get into Tangem. It's a very simple wallet. You can use it. It's super simple in the sense of you can use it with your phone. And the cool thing here that I like is they have two different options on the card. So if you jump over to their website, just go over to Get Tangem. And you have the two options right here, the optional seed phrase option, as well as going with the classic. So if you don't like to mess with a seed phrase, you can go with classic wallet. It's pretty simple to use. What I would recommend is getting into the three card set. That's going to give you kind of that extra backup and also make it even more secure. But the point here is self-custody. This is something we tell people all the time. Get into it. If you haven't started already, maybe you're brand new to crypto and you just got your first Bitcoin, get into holding your own Bitcoin. And you can do that through Tangem. Use our link down below. It helps the channel out. All right. So a couple things I want to hit on today. I'll open up here with the first tweet. This is coming over from Stuart Alderati, who is the uh, CEO and legal for Ripple. The SEC made a serious mistake going after Brad and Chris personally. And he pretty much says that this is not a settlement. This is a surrender by the SEC. So they basically jumped away from the issue with Brad uh, Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, obviously the you know, the executives over at Ripple. I want to play this clip out for you guys. This gets into a little about what John Deaton had to say about this. It's interesting. Listen in. Jay Clayton had done a video with Joe Grunfest, and I've tweeted out in the past, where he bragged how he liked even in non-fraud cases to go after the executives because it, quote, changed the dynamic. Let's make it clear. It was a, strictly a bullying tactic, intimidating tactic. If you go back to the original discovery disputes, even though the SEC had every XRP transaction made by these two executives and Ripple from the beginning of time, 2012, <laughs> Every single transaction, they wanted their credit card receipts. They wanted all their bank statements. And Judge Netburn quashed that and shut it down. But that's what they were doing. It was all about making these two executives' lives uncomfortable, intimidating them, seeking hundreds of millions of dollars from them to force a settlement. Not only is it a loss, it is a total effing embarrassment to the SEC. And it couldn't happen. This embarrassment couldn't happen to a, a more deserving group of fucking people. Woo. And here was a tweet from Garlinghouse himself. He simply said, hey, we were targeted by the SEC in a ruthless attempt to personally ruin us and the company so many have worked hard to build for over a decade. So they recognize this. I think most people in business know how this works in these kind of scenarios where a lot of things are thrown at you, in most cases unjustified, and that was the case uh, going forward. Even Chris Larson, who rarely tweets, came in and said, the last three years we've seen a rogue administration state that needs to be held accountable for its actions. And he's pretty much like, hey, I'm done with this. We are, this is enough is enough. We're gonna maybe go out here and do some offense now. It's gonna be interesting to see how they respond to this. I want to talk uh, and do a quick clip here on Garlinghouse talking about the corruption that's happening. Listen in. But why do you think that the SEC went after you guys specifically? You know, in 2018, there's kind of a, a relatively famous speech given by a guy named Bill Hinman, who is kind of one of the top guys at the SEC, saying that ETH is not a security. And I actually remember that speech. I remember thinking, like, this is great news. How did we go from... ETH is very clearly not a security to XRP is a security. And the whole time, by the way, Ripple was meeting with the SEC. Uh, there's an advisor at Andreessen Horowitz, this guy Bill Hinman, who gave the speech, is now an advisor at Andreessen Horowitz. He just updated his bio on the Andreessen Horowitz website to say that he brought clarity to the crypto market while at the SEC. I mean, like, are you effing kidding me? People use words like con or conspiracy. They use words like corruption. I'm not going to say that because I don't know. But uh, it's, a, it's, it's a fascinating story that I do not think we've heard the end of. Most of the time it's done through the power of being able to hit you with fines. Here was an example, SEC wins. This all happened at the same time. SEC wins a default judgment against Tor Technologies and the founder. This is basically a million dollar fine. Pretty much gonna shut, bankrupt that company. They'll be gone and the people around it most likely will be gone as well. But the SEC can mark that up as a win. All right, so this was another issue. 
that also happened on the same day. So a lot of things kind of aligned with the SEC's, we'll call it a loss, in the sense that they bailed out of the Ripple scenario with Garlinghouse and Larson. But yet at the same time, they're pushing uh, the buttons on all these other things to get headlines. And this is one of the things that, you know, ends out there. And that is library bowing out of the industry. They are abandoning their SEC appeal. And again, this will come because of the cost to do so. This is a problem that everybody is facing. And it's, you know, kind of interesting that they cover these things up with these kinds of moves that just makes it look as though the SEC is winning on these cases when in reality, they're actually losing the very critical ones that really make policy and also make for innovation going forward. I'm gonna jump over to a tweet here, this of course by Jeremy Kaufman with Library. Officially done with any involvement at Library. On the downside, I didn't make any money, but on the upside, every corporate press outlet has branded me a dangerous thought criminal. Further into his tweet right here, I expect to start another venture in the near future, but for today, I'm available for Merce work. So basically he's out of work, They've given him a bad name, and he's kind of ruined his career, or they've ruined his career, all based on his inability to fight a federal agency that is a thousand times larger than you. With that being the end of library, you know, in itself, remember that Odyssey continues to serve more than six million people each month. Let me kind of zoom in on that so you guys can kind of see it. That's the size of their current audience. And really, if you look at that, even comparison to some of the big ones like Mastodon, which is one of the more federated, and I would say still popular, then you got Blue Sky down there with Twitter, Minds, et cetera. But the point is, is that there's a lot of opportunity here for this social network to make its way back onto the blockchain. Uh, so it's certain assets will be assumed by someone interested in resuming its growth. It's unclear if they're going to continue to use library network in the future or switch. I think they're going to switch. Who are they going to switch to? That will be the question mark. You've got a couple of things that could happen. Ripple, maybe, just out of spite, just to show. You also have Solana that could be a play on this. They don't really have a great social network. This would be a potential. You've got Avalanche, who has done it already. And maybe Avalanche would be an opportunity here for this. So there is some big moves coming, I think, with what could happen Uh, with Odyssey. Just to look at the growth, this was their Odyssey monthly usage. Let me kind of zoom in on this spreadsheet if I can. Maybe I can. Let me go zoom up on that. There we go. So you can kind of see right here, uh, 2023 still holding at around 6.6 total unique viewer sessions. This again is now going to need a new place. And the likelihood is there. this is wide open for a new chain. So we'll see how all this plays out for sure. All right, a couple other things that could be happening, and that is people going head to head with the SEC. And you have two titans that are saying maybe we should. This is Elon Musk and Mark Cuban are now filing a joint amicus brief at the Supreme Court calling for an overhaul of the SEC's proceedings. So this is big because remember, Cuban was uh, basically attacked for insider trading. He beat that. And of course, Musk has been pulled multiple times into the SEC's crosshairs and he too has ousted them. But the cool thing is these guys are both billionaires. So they have the capacity and the wherewithal to be able to take it to them. We'll see how it plays out. Let me go over to a clip. This is uh, Garlinghouse standing up to the bullies. Listen it. I lost a lot of sleep when it started. I lost a lot of sleep for, you know, during the, the fight. The first 90 days after we got sued by the SEC was a pretty dark period, to be honest. Uh, There's very high turnover at Ripple. We lost a lot of employees because they're like, look, this is going to be a tough fight. If, if the United States government sues you, U.S. companies, you're kind of radioactive. They don't want to touch you. There are companies in the crypto space who folded their cards. When a bully comes up to you, you've got to stand up to the bully. Sometimes, though, you're not quite as big a company as you might project. <laughs> so... You mean I... <laughs> <laughs> you can finish the sentence. I was going to say something about pudgy penguins. All right, so a couple of things there. I mean, you know, Garlinghouse, though I am a big proponent of what Ripple has done, let's just remember, guys, these guys were well-funded and capable of going head-to-head with the SEC. But to say that on stage for a lot of startups, entrepreneurs, people who are in the space that are just getting going, these are not options. Unfortunately, these are the low-hanging fruit scenarios that come out 
But whether it's the NFT side, the wins that we've seen the SEC get because of just pure and simple, nobody wants to go to court and literally deal with millions and millions in legal fees. Now, some people might say, okay, I'm okay with that. If you've got the wherewithal to do it, then that's most likely going to be the case. I want to go to this next clip of what's next for Ripple and XRP. Listen in. But when are you going to move into stable coins? Yes. <laughs> When? Yes. <laughs> All right, so he's playing, but you know the point is, is they've already done some things very structural to get ready for this. So it's now just a matter of the only approved—I won't call it approved, but somewhat legal position, at least in terms of a token or a non-security asset uh, from a digital standpoint. Ripple, of course, right here, CBDCs and stable coins accelerate payments and reduce costs. So they've already started the process. And he's simple. You know, this is, yeah, we're going to go do it. But remember, they are really facing a formidable foe in that scenario. And that is USDC and what's happening at Circle. So, I mean, it's yes, there could be many. And that's very possible with, obviously, the Ripple technology. There's a lot of advancements and capable of that. But at the same time, what's happening over at Circle, they've got a lot of movement and a lot of penetration and you know they've got this unique you know affinity toward ethereum and erc20 tokens that really could change things dramatically as well so it'd be this would be a good one as well to kind of play out i want to hit you on the last tweet right here that we put out elizabeth warren's campaign rushes to blame crypto for nuclear weapons existing the same day as sec's embarrassing surrender warren highlights cost of nuclear arms needed for crypto crackdown to stop nuclear proliferation this was 19 hours ago. All this was happening literally almost at the same exact time that the SEC was taking another one across the, the nose. And this is the problem that we do face is the amount of that crypto army that is trying to make the siege upon the industry itself at the same time losing battle after battle, but they're trying to win the war. So the key here, and this is the one I always tell you, let your people know, let your lawmakers know, go over to the Coinbase, uh, platform, whether you stand with crypto, et cetera, and get out there and talk to your representatives and let them know where you stand. Let's go over to a couple of tokens that have been moving today. Stacks, of course, on the move right here with Bitcoin, of course, flying above 30. Also, Bitcoin holding. Let me kind of jump over to the Bitcoin chart real quick as well. Uh, this is on the four hour, so it's uh, hit the $30,000 mark. XRP, of course, that was the big move right here. Any kind of news at all, I feel like, moves the XRP chart. Anything that is at remotely against the SEC and it has the name Ripple in it, XRP is going to move. So nice little move right here in this period of time. Let's see what we got there. That was on the 19th up to now, running at about 9%, but it's on a little bit of a four-hour red right now. It might hold the green candle for the day. We'll see, but up slightly. How are you playing these tokens? Are you guys looking at short-term holds or not? Just let me know, drop some comments down below. Of course, if you uh, wanna reach me, it's very simple. You can catch me out there on Twitter. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.